Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another video. Make sure y'all subscribe. I am back with my post fight review and thoughts on Tyson Fury versus Otto Willene. Um, as you know, Tyson Fury, he was able to come away with the unanimous decision over Otto Willene, but definitely wasn't a cherry pick. This fight definitely turned out to be a cherry bomb, cherry bomb right in his face. And um, Otto Willene, he definitely, definitely came to try to get that upset, man. Um, he definitely gave Tyson Fury a different look. And I don't think Tyson Fury was expecting the fight to be like this because honestly, man, I'm going to say only thing I knew about Otto Willene was that he's from Sweden and he was undefeated. You know, and a lot of uh, boxing fans, I think even hardcore fans, they didn't really know much about him. And they were kind of feeling like he didn't really have a chance because I'm not going to lie. I thought this was just another another fight that was supposed to make Tyson Fury look good because, like I said, this was a name I didn't hear of. And. The thing is about Tyson Fury and his team is like they just keep going for these these obscure names. You know, there's all these other names out here that they could fight in the heavyweight division that would kind of trigger people and make them say, oh, this is going to be interesting. You know, he's not really going for Wilder or Joshua Common opponents. You know, he could grab a, he could even grab a Adam Kalnaki, uh, get a Dillian White, you know, get a Hylanus, somebody, man, just somebody with a name. Or Pavekin, just somebody with a name that, that make us say, you know, oh, he's going, he, he, he's really trying to go for Wilder or Joshua next, you know. Instead, he's going for the, after these obscure names on this major platform with, you know, Top Rank and uh, Bob Arum, you know, just to get these uh, big money fights, you know, over, uh, over unknown opponents. And it kind of fools the audience because, you know, they're thinking that this is a great boxer. You know, they're thinking this is a guy he's really putting on a quote unquote good show but the opponent's really just a mediocre opponent. But Saturday, it kind of backfired. Otto Willene definitely showed that he was more than a mediocre opponent. He definitely was just like almost like a hidden gem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was almost like they were just digging in the crates and they found something that just blasted back in their face. And it was like, oh, shit, I didn't expect that, you know, and it, and it just turned out to be, you know, another fight for Tyson Fury that that kind of puts us in question about how he'll look in a wilder rematch or if he'll want a wilder rematch but um let's just go back and look at the fight a little bit man because um overall the, the the texture of this fight man and the rhythm of this fight it was just something Tyson Fury you know has never had before in my opinion you know even just looking back at some of Tyson Fury's fights in the past I've never seen him in a fight like this where he had to you know really dig deep in this one but um first couple of rounds Otto Willene like I said, he's a southpaw, and he definitely posed a different type of uh, look for Tyson Fury. You know, first couple rounds, he was already kind of backing Tyson Fury up. Um, Tyson was jabbing and moving, but, you know, there were times when he would get Tyson Fury to walk right into that left hand. He was able to crack Tyson Fury a couple times with the left, um, straight left. And um, you could already kind of see that style was uh, bugging Tyson Fury, um, especially in the second round, because Otto Willen was doing something a lot of fighters don't do, and definitely something Deontay Wilder he'll probably want to take notes on Otto Willene was going to the body <laughs> you know he was definitely going to that big ass target that a lot of people don't ever try you know Tyson Fury is a very elusive guy you know he makes that head look tiny as hell the way he's able to slip and dodge punches so why not go to that body you know why not jab to the chest and go to the body and that's what Willene was doing in that second round because those shots were really starting to hurt Tyson uh he was he was trying to block those punches so by the time he's blocking Willene goes back up tops and hit, you know, hits him with some good head shots. And then in the third round, Tyson Fury, I felt like he was winning most of the round with the boxing he was getting off, you know, getting the jabs off. But Willene, he wanted to make it rough and tough again. You know, he went back on the inside while he was like uh, clinching um, Tyson Fury by, with the right. You know, he was able to crack him with a good left hand, like a good uh, overhand left right onto the right brow. Tyson Fury opened up a big ass cut. Started uh, gushing blood. You could already see Tyson Fury kind of rubbing and scratching at it and like like shaking his head. Like you could really see the cut was bothering him. Third and fourth round, the cut was bothering him. I think he won those two rounds just by kind of keeping the boxing pace, but you could really see it was bothering him. Um, I kind of took a look at the cut and they were rubbing all that Vaseline on it. It was almost one of those cuts where you know if that was anybody else, they would have stopped the fight because it was cut in two places, like right over the brow and then right under the lid. And like half looked like all the skin was gone on that brow by the end of the fight or or even like in the fourth or fifth round, like you could really just see red and the blood was starting to pour and they were really just having to like clog it up with Vaseline. And in my opinion, I thought they probably would have stopped the fight, you know, just by seeing all that blood. But of course, this is Tyson Fury, so they let it go on. Um, 
by round five and six, I think Willene, he was still making it a rough fight. You know, he was grabbing and holding a lot. Uh, he was hitting Tyson with some good body shots, uh, putting him in the headlock, just, just really like bugging him and like, you know, doing different things to kind of take Tyson Fury out of just the boxing and making it a rough, tough fight. And uh, up to round six, that first half, I say the fight was three to three. You know, you could disagree or not, but I think Willene, he tied it up and uh, he was definitely giving, making it a tough fight. But by round seven, I feel like he kind of uh, he hit his uh, peak and then he didn't really find any other way to level up because by round seven and eight, Tyson Fury, he kind of uh, turned the tables on him. He started coming forward more, leaning on Willene, uh leaning in. You know, he was kind of hitting Tyson Fury, uh, hitting Willene with some good body shots. Uh, Fury, he was like leaning in, smothering Willene, just hitting him to the body and putting all that weight on him. You know, he started fighting um, like a big man. You know, he wasn't trying to box from the outside anymore. He kept putting that weight on Willene and was really gassing him out, just hitting uh, Willene with those body shots, um, even in round nine. And um, yeah, man, uh, Willene, I, I just felt like he kind of gassed out here. Um, and this is where I kind of lost respect for him because he was he had something in the first half of the fight. You know, he was being the rough guy. He opened up a big gash where all it would probably would have did was all it probably would have took was maybe like two, three, four more shots, you know, on that eye. He probably could have got the stoppage win if he would just stuck to the body body also. But he kind of let up in that second half of the fight. You know, he looked gassed, especially having that big six foot nine guy lay on him. So up to round 10 and 11, you know. Tyson Fury was just kind of like walking forward and just leaning on him and like just unloading body shots and head shots. And I was surprised Willene was taking these shots. Either Tyson Fury don't hit that hard or Willene's chin was that good, you know, because he was just getting hit with some hard shots. He just started becoming a puncher bag in a couple of the rounds. But um, round 12, Fury, he kept up the pace, was still working harder. But Willene, he did come back a little bit stronger. And he did crack Tyson Fury with another good shot. And um, I thought he probably could have had him out there because I could kind of see Tyson Fury's legs do a little dance, you know. But again, Willeen, he didn't have that next level in him, and the, you know, to, to try to capitalize on another uh, on another moment. So it was another moment lost on his part. So um, after this fight, I definitely had it. Probably like probably gave Ty, uh, probably gave Willeen maybe four rounds maybe four rounds, but I definitely gave him three rounds. So it was about like nine rounds to three, eight rounds to four. But it was definitely a good spirited effort by Otto Willeen. Like I said, for a guy I haven't heard of, he definitely came to to make this more than just a show. He made it a fight against Tyson Fury. Um, like I said, I just couldn't give him any more respect than I gave him for some of the things he was able to do because he had a nice cut on Tyson Fury. Um, he, was, he had a nice body game too that he could have executed, but he didn't he didn't really capitalize on all these things he had, you know, so um, I just felt like, you know, I, for effort, I gave him a B, you know, definitely. But uh, Tyson Fury won the fight, but he definitely didn't win in a fashion that makes me want to say that Wilder and his team. I mean, Fury and his team won a Wilder fight. You know, he definitely didn't definitely didn't make this a fight for his casual fans to be like, oh, wow. You know, this was a great fight. You know, this definitely wasn't another Robert Schwartz fight to make him look Muhammad Ali-esque. You know what I mean? This was just one of those fights where somebody like Otto Willeen didn't get the script. You know, Otto Willeen didn't say, oh, I'm going to lay down this fight. That That's what the script say. No, nah, he he burned that bitch. <laughs> you know, he definitely said that I'm going to touch Fury. I'm going to cut Fury. I'm going to put my hands on him. Whether they like it or not, you know, I'm definitely going to make this a tough fight and make him, make Tyson Fury look average. So, I definitely have to say Otto Willeen definitely presented a heart in this fight. You know, very strong left hand and a very good body attack early on, but he just abandoned all of that, you know. So I got I kind of, you know, was kind of pissed off at that. You know, I hate seeing whenever a fighter has something good going, but they don't know how to level up and capitalize on it. But, yeah, shout out to uh, Otto Willeen for making a good fight because he definitely made his stock go up. He's definitely in that category of some of these other second tier fighters. You know, he could definitely make a good fight for somebody like Adam Kalnaki, uh, Joseph Parker, uh, Dillian White, Derek Jasora. He definitely made his stock go up and make Tyson Fury's look questionable. You know, I don't care what you say. You might disagree, but he definitely made Tyson Fury's stock look questionable. Because if you go back and look at Tyson Fury, even his elite fights, which is Vladimir Klitschko, Deontay Wilder. Um, what else was easily elite fight? There was no other ones, right? Just those two. You know, he came out with a draw, and even the Vladimir Klitschko fight, it was just kind of an ugly, ugly grab fist where he just kind of took the older man, 
you know, out of his game. You know, it was just an easy win for him. So he just utilized his body in there, but he didn't really look like he did against somebody like Robert Schwartz or the Safaris or Pinatas, you know, whatever his name is, Pinata or whatever. But he didn't look like that Muhammad Ali style where he's, you know, trying to, you know, you know, mimic Muhammad Ali moving his head. He didn't look like that against um against uh, Klitschko he had his moments against Wilder but he almost still got knocked out in that fight and then came out with a draw and now in this fight against Ottawa Lean a guy who was supposed to be easy to beat he came out getting busted up and just fighting a whole different game where he was getting beat up you know so going into the Wilder rematch it's only you know natural that everybody thinks that Wilder's going to knock him out because to me Wilder's improving Wilder's getting better you know Wilder's more dangerous and he's always dangerous because he has that punching power where Tyson Fury you know we don't know if he's going to be there physically or mentally you know especially after this showing in this fight and even after this fight there's probably going to be a lot of questions about you know what he's going to do if a guy like Otto Willeen you know if a, if a guy like Otto Willeen probably took you know something out of him you know a lot of people are going to say that he take if he took something mentally out of him did he crack his chin hard enough and bring the chin level down you know there's a lot of people that are going to say oh man this guy is not going to be game for a wilder because he didn't look that he didn't look great in this fight he definitely showed the heart of a warrior or a fighter but not in the sense that he's on an elite level you know we definitely can't say he's on these levels with guys like Andy Ruiz or Deontay Wilder right now because he didn't he didn't look like that to me so don't get me wrong like I said Tyson Fury I feel like he's definitely a guy that has good movement and good balance for his size but it's only against the lesser competition where you really get to see it you know when he's in there with solid competition he gets hurt you know so he knows that you know i think he knows that and his family knows that and his trainers know that that's why in a separate video i might talk about what his father said but um you know his father didn't like how his performance looked he's mad at ben davis in this fight you know so he's really feeling like even wilder could knock him out so that's that says a lot you know his father has been with him since day one his father said that he's been boxing since he was a baby so you know only he shoot he knows him better than anybody you know so that's just being real and you know that's how i feel man i feel like he didn't show me anything that would make him feel like he could beat wilder this next go round. you know but um yeah man that's all i got on this one guys man like i felt like it was a good spirited fight for tyson fury on the level that I think he's on, but I just don't feel like he's on a level with Deontay Wilder. Not right now, man. Not even Andy Ruiz. But, um, yeah, man, like I said, that's all I got. So, guys, just leave your thoughts in the comments section. What do you think? Do you think uh, Ty Spear is going to be ready for a Deontay Wilder rematch? I don't think so because that cut was pretty big. So, he's probably going to get stitches. He might get suspended. And then the fight's going to be postponed. Then Ty Spear is going to have to fight two or three more obscure names. And then Wilder's probably going to have to go off and fight Andy Ruiz. But... That's what it looks like in the cards for me, guys. Uh, just let me know what y'all think. Y'all can agree or disagree, but just make sure y'all subscribe. I'm Combo Breaker 99. I'm out. Peace.